What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Tree Talks here. And ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be breaking down the AAF Offensive and Defensive Players of the Week here in a little bit. And if you want to get right to that, you can skip through this part. Before we get to that, we have some breaking Jacksonville Jaguar news. So ladies and gentlemen, the Jaguars have signed defensive assistant Don Capers, who has 30 years of defensive play calling experience. And it's weird that he's going to be assisting Todd Wash. You just got to know if Wash fucks up, then Capers is going to take over. And I think Capers might be the missing link to this defense to make it even more elite and to fix it and to make it what it 100% needs to be and what it 100% can be. I'm excited to see what Mr. Capers is going to bring to the table for our Jacksonville Jaguars. I think he'll be good in, a good influence on guys like Yannick Ngakwe, Jalen Ramsey, all of our young guys, Miles Jack as well, just to see how they will uh, perform now with a really, really, really good veteran of the defensive game in Don Capers. It's going to be interesting. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the AAF Offensive and Defensive Players of the Week. Hit that intro. One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, for that. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. So, ladies and gentlemen, you know the deal. If you watch the week one offensive and defensive player of the week, what we do is we name three on the offensive side and three on the defensive side. And we're going to kick things off, as always, with the offensive side of the ball and start off with the quarterback player of the week and that is Garrett Gilbert who else is it going to be 393 yards and two touchdowns put together the best AAF game of any quarterback in AAF history two weeks in but you know he went out he balled out he had a good completion percentage as well he had 67 uh, percent completion percentage he was slinging the ball down the field all day had a really reliable wide receiver in uh, Charles Johnson a man that we will trust me get to in a little bit um but Gilbert was finding the open man. He was making all the throws he needed to down the field, and his completion percentage, like I said, was on point, and he is leading currently the best team in the alliance at the quarterback position, and he is definitely chasing a job in the NFL because he is balling out and playing really, really good football. And speaking of the man himself, we're talking wide receiver MVP. Again, who else is it going to be? Charles Johnson, 192 yards and a touchdown. A man who didn't do too much last week. Uh, didn't really hear at least anything from him. Uh, not really explosive, but this week comes out and he has one hell of an explosive game with 192 yards and a touchdown. The connection between him and Garrett Gilbert has been elite, at least in this game. Uh, you have to imagine this is going to be a dynamic duo to worry about all season long. If you're playing the Apollos, you got to worry about quarterback Garrett Gilbert and his connection with wide receiver Charles Johnson, because these two are both young men that could go off at any minute. 192 yards and a touchdown. He was burning, burning the secondary, and he was making big, big plays throughout the entire contest. And without a doubt, is more deserving than anybody to be the best wide receiver named this week. And now, for the first time ever, and uh, it might not be the last time, we're going to have a co-MVP at the running back position, starting things off with Zach Stacy, who had 101 yards for the Memphis Express, as well as Daquan, <clears throat> Daquan Gardner, who had 104 yards. Both of their teams, unfortunately, did not come out on top, but they both had really, really solid games uh, running the ball this week uh, for their respective teams, both over 100 yards. First time any running backs have done that. Stacy did it first, and then Gardner. Of course, Stacy, who is a really good NFL running back, at least for my money, uh, didn't really get another opportunity. He was part of the whole Jeff Fisher organization and the Rams. And, you know, if you're a part of that, you're basically blackballed in the NFL. And I think this is what uh, Stacy's doing is he's trying to get another chance uh, for the big money in the NFL. Um, and especially if he keeps playing like this and he keeps putting the pedal to the metal, he will definitely try and find himself another NFL job. Now, Daquan 
Mr. Gardner. Gardner, he had a good game, dude. He's quick. He's fun to watch. You know, once he picks a hole, he's down. He's accelerating. He's downhill. He's in the end zone. Both of these running backs had tremendous weeks, and I think it would have been impossible for me to pick either one, even though Gardner had three more rushing yards, and I guess that technically would make him better. But both of them had a great week this week, and they both deserve a co-MVP at the running back position. So congratulations to uh, Gardner as well as Zach Stacy for being the running backs of the week. Coming up now, we got the defensive players of the week, and for the defense, it was... Come on, kitty. Middle of the video, bro. Damn it, kitty. Now, like I was saying, the defense was dominated by the defensive line this week. A lot of sacks happened, and a lot of players on the defensive line really showed their true talent. And that's one thing the NFL is looking for, is really true, great defensive linemen. I mean, talk to Jacksonville Jaguars. That's really how they built their elite defenses uh, among pass rushers, you know, inside and outside. And all three of these guys are actually defensive linemen, all three of them have a chance to maybe go out and get an NFL contract. Starting things off with Jeremy Falk. He had one sack and four tackles. Second in tackles uh, for the team. He had himself a day. He's one of those guys up the middle that's really hard to block. He's a bigger dude. Um, but, uh, all three of these guys actually are more uh, interior defensive linemen, which is you know kind of surprising. They're getting after the quarterback, and you know they're making a lot of tackles as well. You know, four tackles that's pretty impressive for a defensive tackle. Obviously, making sure that things stay inside and things that don't balance out for a big gain on the uh, defensive side of the ball. Coming up next, we got Shikari Soto, who had 1.5 sacks and three tackles. Another guy who is an inside defensive tackle that has really been a menace. Um, as of late here in the AAF, he also was kind of in consideration last week to become a uh, defensive player of the week. Last week, there's a lot of good linebackers that uh, actually balled out and played really well. And uh, he was about to make the list, but he unfortunately just missed out on it. But this week, he did not, and he will be making the list with the 1.5 sack, three tackle performance he had. And it's definitely good enough to end him up here on defensive player of the week, getting him his first honor. Oh, what an awesome, awesome, awesome honor. Because Treve Talks is all the AAF rankings that matter, power rankings and players of the week. Mine's the only one that matters. Um, coming up next, for the man that really dominated the most on the defensive line this week, and maybe overall defensively, we have Carter Schultz, six tackles, two sacks for the Salt Lake Stallions. This guy led the team in tackles and sacks this week. And, dude, if, if he... And he had a lot of QB hurries as well. That's not on the bigger picture, the bigger stat sheet uh, on AAF.com. I don't think they're really doing the uh, the whole next-gen stats type of shit for Schultz. But I, if they do, I really want to see it because this guy was in the quarterback's face a lot. He was in Luis Perez's face a lot. He was in almost every single play, whether it be a run play or a pass play, making plays down the field. And he would also be sacking Perez, making sure that he doesn't have time to throw the ball. I'm really impressed with Schultz and what he brings to the table. And I think uh, this is definitely a guy that has potential to make it to the next level in the NFL, especially if he's dominating the way he is here in the AAF. Uh, definitely, definitely has the, all the potential in the world to make it to the NFL. And that was the AAF Offensive and Defensive Players of the Week. What you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Trevor Pixley. Follow me on Instagram, at Trey Bond Pixley. Also, if you're feeling also generous, you can go ahead and donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Troop Talks. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. And nobody will work with me. That was just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, do some great.